today I'll be talking about childhood tuberculosis. So, as all of you know, tuberculosis is a chronic infectious disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. It is a reaction of the tissues to the human host to the presence and multiplication of the mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria. So, it is a clinical state that is arising from the TB infection that is mainly because of the outcome between the capacity of the host to contain, to eliminate the organisms versus the capacity of the host to multiply. Suppose if the uh, host is able to eliminate then there will not be any tuberculosis infection. Suppose if the host is having some problem like immunocompromised state or steroid intake or some reason that they are not able to eliminate, then the disease manifests. All right. Coming to the magnitude of tuberculosis infection. So it is one third of the world's population is being infected with tuberculosis. And in that, India accounts for around one third of the world TB burden. Coming to the prevalence in India, it is 15 to 25 per thousand population, and 15 million are infected, and 25 percentage are sputum positive. Three to four million infected are children. So this is about the prevalence of the disease in India. Coming to the epidemiology, agent. So the agent is Mycobacterium tuberculosis and mycobacterium bovis and the reservoir is an infected patient. Code of infection is either droplet infection when they inhale it that becomes a pulmonary tuberculosis or dust and ingestion. Suppose it is a contaminated milk or unpasteurized milk then ingestion then direct entry through the inflamed or abraded skin mucous membrane and host factors are all age group are affected and congenital is rare. So, when it comes to sex, girls are more affected than boys at puberty. But uh, after that, again, boys are more affected. Malnutrition is a susceptible risk factor. Intercurrent infection, like measles and whooping cough, that is another one problem. An environment like overcrowding, inadequate ventilation, a damp environment, insanity, and unhygienic conditions. So these are the epidemiological risk factors. So I want you people to remember the agent that is mycobacterium tuberculosis and mycobacterium bovis and the mode of infection, usually droplet, sometimes ingestion or direct contact by the skin. So portal of entry of tuberculosis. So inhalation is a common So lung is a primary organ that is affected in more than 90% of the cases. Ingestion of milk containing the, that is unpasteurized milk, that can cause bovine tuberculosis. Then contamination of superficial skin or mucous membrane with tubercle bacteria and congenital infection when the mother has lymphohematogenous spread. So that through that way, it spreads during pregnancy or through the tuberculous endometritis. So it can be either way, either it can spread to the placenta or through the infected uterus per se. So these are the modes, primary tuberculosis, ingestion, inhalation, skin contamination and other thing is congenital infection. Next coming to the primary tuberculosis infection. So the primary infection is nothing but gone focus. That is at the site of first implantation, usually single and subplural. In most it heals or disappears or fibrosis or calcifies and most of the primary focus. In primary complex is nothing but the primary focus plus the hilar lymph nodes and the draining lymphatic. So complication arises most commonly from the regional adenitis than from the primary focus. So this is about the primary complex. Primary focus is just denotes the area. But primary complex denotes the primary focus with hilar lymph nodes with the draining lymphatic. Next coming to the Primary infection, children versus adults. So what happens in adults? The regional lymphadenitis are less marked. Bronchial erosion is less frequent and there is less risk of dissemination. Thus, adult primary infection tends to be more local and pulmonary. But in children, disseminated infections are 
common. Next, progress of primary tuberculosis. So, the progression of tuberculosis depends upon the age of the children, number of the tubercle vessel, and host resistance. So, apparently, healed focus or nodes may contain viable organisms for many years. During the first four to eight weeks, organisms are disseminated in the bloodstream. So, this is progress of primary tuberculosis. There is a primary tuberculosis that goes on to cause infection of that particular organ. Either because of the age or because of the load of the vessel or because of the host resistance. This determines whether it has to be contained or whether it will progress. Progress of pulmonary disease. So progress of primary infection. There is progression of the recently acquired pulmonary primary infection. Endogenous exacerbation also can occur and exogenous exacerbation by reinfection with the newly acquired bacilli. Symptoms of childhood tuberculosis. So the most important thing is failure to thrive. The child, mother will complain that the child is not gaining weight adequately. And intermittent fever. Sometimes they can be evening rising temperature also. Pleural effusion, status, such as abdominal disease, abdominal mass, then when the bone is affected, they can be lymph arthritis, painless lymphadenopathy, persistent skin ulcer, sterile pyuria, and many cases. So these are the some of the symptoms related to childhood tuberculosis. Coming to the pulmonary lesion in tuberculosis. That is a primary complex, pulmonary lesion in tuberculosis. So here you can see the gone focus. The complications of the primary focus. So rupture of the focus into the pleural space causing sclerosis. Rupture of the focus into the bronchus causing translation. Enlarged focus, sometimes laminated or point shadow. So these are the things. So, what, what all complications can happen? The complications of regional lymphadenopathy. Like whenever there is regional lymph nodes, it can cause like bronchial obstruction, bronchial obstruction, emphysema. Complete bronchial obstruction can lead to collapse. If it is incomplete, it is emphysema. If it is complete, it can lead to collapse. Erosion can happen, consolidation, and rupture of the node into the pericardium. That is tuberculous pericardial escalation, rupture of the node into the pericardium. Sequel of bronchial complications, picture of the bronchus by the site of erosion, cylindrical bronchitis in area of the old collapse, wedge shadow, that is contracture and fibrosis of the segmental lesion and linear scar of fibrosis following segmental lesion. Symptoms. Symptoms of primary complex, they can be mild fever, anorexia, weight loss, and decreased activity with cough. Progress of primary complex, they can be high-grade fever, cough, cough with expectoration, hemoptysis. Hemoptysis happens usually when associated with cavity and alteration of the bronchus. Abnormal chest signs, they can have decreased air entry, dullness, and crepitation. So these are the abnormal chest signs that you can see. Endobronchial tuberculosis can happen to be so fever, troublesome cough, dyspnea, wheezing, and sinuses. Pleural effusion follows rupture of a subpleural focus, also by hematogenous spread from primary focus, occurs because of hypersensitivity to tuberculous protein, not necessarily by infection per se, it can also occur because of hypersensitivity reaction. Next is miliary TB. So, this most common with the First three to six months of age after infection, due to heavy hematogenous spread of tubercle bacilli, onset, insidious with fever and weight loss, palpable liver and spleen, and tachypnea with normal chest finding. Always, miliary tuberculosis is remember, it is due to heavy hematogenous spread of the tubercle bacilli. So there we have the sclerosis, tachypnea with normal chest finding. Next, coming to the miliary tuberculosis, hematogenous dissemination leads to progressive development of small lesions throughout the body with the tubercles everywhere liver, lungs, spleen, 
bone marrow, heart and pancreas, it can be there in brain, thyroid, skin. Radiological diagnosis can be snow from appearance, that is there is small lung nodules of 1 millimeter in size or above in throughout the lung field. Like this, there are small, 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 small nodules throughout the lung field. And here also you can see the cross pathological specimen, similar problem is there. Alright, cutaneous tuberculosis. So cutaneous tuberculosis is nothing but TB affecting the skin. So that can be either associated with the primary complex or associated with hematogenic dissemination or associated with hypersensitivity to tuberculous protein. Alright. Next, coming to the skin tuberculosis, this is TB varicosa cutis. Erythema nodosum. You can see the red color areas here. Erythema nodosum. Then tuberculosis of superficial lymph nodes that is called a scrofuloderma. So this can happen in scrofuloderma can happen in tonsillar or submandibular lymph nodes, supraclavicular, axillary or epitrochlear and inguinal lymph nodes. So these are areas which get affected by superficial lymphadenopathy. Next is ocular tuberculosis. So ocular tuberculosis can be either primary or it can be because of hypersensitivity or it can be related to biliary tuberculosis. After trauma, it is yellowish gray nodules on palpebral conjunctiva with preauricular lymphadenopathy or hypersensitivity that is nodules on the lymphus recurring in proximity or tuberculosis of choroid with the biliary tb, choroidal tuberculosis. So this is a choroidal tuberculosis. Here you can see this is a pale patches infected with tuberculosis. Next is tuberculous otitis media. So it is either primary with free auricular adenitis or metastatic spread with primary elsewhere. And symptoms can present as painless otorrhea, maybe blood stain, and complications like secondary infection, deafness, and TB meningitis. So these are the Tuberculous otitis media complications. TID or abdominal TB that is related to hematogenous spread from the lung or swallowing of the infected sputum. Painless ulcers can be there, ulcers on the tonsils and esophageal diverticulum secondary to rupture of the mediastinal node into the lumen. They can, they can also present with colic abdominal pain, vomiting, constipation, dowie abdomen, rolled up omentum, and tuberculous enteritis. Renal tuberculosis can also be there as a secondary tuberculosis. Tubercles in the glomeruli, facial mark, TB of the bladder. Sometimes we can present with dysuria, anesuria, and pyuria. <coughs> so, this is a picture of patient renal tuberculosis. Cases renal tuberculosis. How it is infected? So skeletal tuberculosis, you all know, vertebra is most commonly affected, followed by the knee, hip, and elbow. Tuberculous spondylitis. X-ray findings like narrowing of the disc space, collapse, extensive disruption of kyphosis, and complications such as paravertebral axis. Next is genital tuberculosis. It is uncommon before puberty, usually due to lymphohemorrhaginous spread, occasionally by direct extension from the adjacent bone, gut, or the urinary tract. Alright. Next, going to the TB meningitis part. TB meningitis is 1 in 300 of the primary infection. The TB meningitis is always secondary. So, secondary to most of the time, lung tuberculosis or maybe J tuberculosis. So it is always secondary. The pathophysiology is there is a focus called as rich focus in the subarachnoid space. So this rich focus ruptures into the subarachnoid space and there is inflammatory exudate, raised intracranial pressure. Additions are formed between the base and the roof of the source particle, involvement of the cranial nerves and cerebral end arthritis. So all these are the Pathophysiology of tuberculous meningitis. In stages, 
stage of CGM. So, first one is irritability and anorexia. Second is focal neurological signs, seizure, self pleasure. Third one is loss of consciousness, coma, papilledema, and decelebrate rigidity. Complications of TB meningitis they can present as hydrocephalus, subdural effusion, hemiplegia or paraplegia, intellectual impairment, blindness, deafness, intracranial calcification, leading to hypothalamic and pituitary dysfunction and growth failure, diabetic incubus, failure of development of secondary sexual characteristics. So these are the complications of TB meningitis. Diagnosis of TBM, there are signs of meningeal irritation, X-ray chest, CT scan showing basal exudate, inflammatory granuloma, tubercular testing, we can do see whether it is positive. Retinoscopy for coronal tuberculosis. Lumbar puncture shows elevated pH of pressure. Complex biogram, more than 100 to 500 WBG, more than 40 percentage of protein, low or normal sugar, AFP, smear and culture also can be done in the pH of fluid. Prognosis in TB meningitis. So there is 100 percent mortality without treatment. So stage 1, 100 percent survive. 75% prognosis is good as stage 2 and stage 3 is kind of variable and all of us have sequelae. So direct test for tuberculosis, real lesion staining for AFB, AFB culture on IG medium for 4 weeks, PCR amplification of targeted mycobacteria DNA sequences, DNA probes like fluorescence into to hybridization assay. Culture like LG medium can be used back test, sufficient AFD system and MG IT. So these are the culture media tools. PCR can be done for rapid results, zero diagnosis, LSA, quantifron TB test for diagnosis, lateral tuberculosis. This is positive macro test, as you all know. So we take the transverse diameter. Transverse diameter we take. We measure for the erythema and the induration, but we take induration into concentration. So this is the most commonly used test for establishing the diagnosis of tuberculosis. Delayed type hypersensitivity reaction. 0.1 ml is used for 5 tuberculin units PPD intradermally. So around 5 mm reveals to be raised. The reaction is red after 48 to 72 hours. So look for induration. Erythema may not be always. Observation and inference 48 to 72 hours later, diameter of induration is measured transversely to the long axis of the forearm. Induration more than 10 mm suggests of natural induction. 5 to 10 is borderline, less than 5 is negative matter test, which does not rule out tuberculosis. So remember, more than 10 is positive. False negative test done during incubation period. So several weeks following knee risk during steroid therapy, overriding CB infection, severe malnutrition. If the mantle was given subcutaneous and inactive tuberculin dose, so all these can be false negative. Next coming to false positive. So that is the patient is not having tuberculosis, but still mantle is coming as false positive, like atypical mycobacteria, DCG vaccine. Infection at the site of the test. So, all this can give false positive results. So, next, coming to the kindly note of this slide, coming to the presumptive diagnosis of tuberculosis. So, at least three of them should be present. So, symptoms and signs of tuberculosis, like fever, cough, and weight loss. History of close contact with tuberculosis, positive tuberculin skin test, and gastric juice. Positive for AFB, lymph node or tissue biopsy positivity, radiological features suggest of TB, and response to anti TB therapy. So, that is response to ATT. So, all these suggest presumptive diagnosis of tuberculosis. Now, this is the definition of history of contact. Any child who lives in a household with an adult taking ATT or has taken therapy in the past two years. So, this is taken as a definition of contact history. Radiology. 
In extra pulmonary TB, presence of lesion on the chest X-ray supports the diagnosis. Enlarged lymph node in the hilum and right paratracheal region. Consolidation in progressive primary disease. Heterogeneous poorly marginated with prediction to apical or posterior segments of upper lobe or superior segments of lower lobe. Bronchiectasis, pleural effusion and miliary tuberculosis. That will show us millet size lesion. So these are the radiological findings in <coughs> tuberculosis. Next, coming to the treatment of TB. So here you can see. So these are the commonly used drugs. INH, 5 mg per kg. Rifampicin, 10 mg per kg. <coughs> per day. Pyrazenamide, 25 mg per kg per day. Isambutol is 20, 20 mg per kg per day and streptomycin is 20 to 30 mg per kg per day. So these are the short forms. INH by H, rifampicin is R, pyrazinamide is Z, isambutol is E and streptomycin is S. Second line drugs. Drug resistant cases or when first line drugs cannot be used, then you use second line drugs. Example, cyclops. Serin, ethionamide, TAS, and canamycin. So these are the second line drugs. Other drugs, strictly for drug resistant cases, example, quinolone, sirafamycin, amicacin, imipidam, and ampicillin. So these are the other drugs that can be used. So coming to the phases of treatment of tuberculosis. Intensive phase, this is to eliminate the bacterial load, prevent emergence of drug resistance, and at least three bactericidal drugs are to be used. So this is about the intensive phase. Continuation phase, you continue and complete the therapy and at least two bactericidal drugs are used and steroids like anti-inflammatory effect like miliary TB, peritonitis, pericarditis and TB meningitis. So in all these cases, you use steroids. So this is about the RNTCP treatment. So for uh, new cases like smear positive, New smear negative and new extra pulmonary TB. All these falls under new cases. Intensive and continuation treatment you give. That is intermittent 2 HR ready and 4 HR. For previously treated cases like relapse, failure, treatment after default or retreatment, you give 2 HR ready S and 1 HR ready. That is intensive treatment is for 3 months and continuation cases for. Five months. Now, treatment policy in children with tuberculosis. This is according to IAP protocol. The previous one, what we saw was RNTCP. This is IAP protocol. In IAP protocol, in preventive therapy, that is only in man to positivity, you give six months HR. And in case there is primary complex, localized lymphadenopathy, pleural effusion, you give two HRZ plus four HR. Progress of pulmonary TB and multiple lymphadenopathies, then you give 2 HR ready plus 4 HR. Miliary bone TB, renal, and pericardial, you give 2 HR ready plus 7 HR. TB meningitis, you give 2 HR ready plus 10 HRE, as well as steroids, either prednisolone or dexamethasone. All right. So, next coming to the five components of DOS. So then DOS is nothing but it is a political and administrative commitment. Diagnosis is made by good quality of food and microscopy, adequate supply of good quality drugs, directly observed treatment in the presence of a medical worker and systemic monitoring and accountability. So these are the five components of DOS. This is to ensure that the patient is taking the drugs and taking good quality of the drugs and the patient is being followed up. So drug resistance. Drug resistance can be either natural or primary. It can be acquired, it can be initial, or it can be a multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. So primarily it can be a multi-drug or initially it might be responding, later on it might have become resistant. So that is one thing. And another one thing is multi-drug resistant TB. Let us see them. So to treatment of resistant tuberculosis. So if it is only INH resistant, then you go for 18 months, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol. Suppose if it is rifampicin resistant, then you go for 18 to 24 months of INH, 
pyrazinamide and so whichever drug is resistant that particular drug you omit and you give the other first line drug multi drug resistant tb treat for 24 months after culture conversion with regimen containing three second line drugs including aminoglycoside then streptomycin one fluoroquinolone and one oral second line drug all right so here comes diagnostic algorithm of diagnostic algorithm of pulmonary tuberculosis so primary tb so primary tuberculosis suspect so if the patient has fever or cough for two weeks weight loss or no weight gain history of contact with suspected or diagnosed case of active tb you see whether there is expectoration is present or not if expectoration is present at least examine two smear suppose if one or two is positive then you can go for ATT. suppose if the problem happens if it is negative sputum is negative then you give empirical antibiotic for around one to two weeks then if the cough is persisting repeat the sputum smear examination if both are negative suppose if one or two is again positive then you go for ATT. If both are negative, get a chest X-ray with man two done. If it is suggestive TB, again put a negative TB ATT. If these are negative for tuberculosis, X-ray with put them, you are not able to uh, man two, you are not able to come to a conclusion. If it is negative, then refer to a pediatrician for further evaluation. So this is the usual protocol. I want you people to copy down this slide. This is a flow chart of what to do. Kindly follow this uh, protocol and uh, copy this to chart. All right, let me brush up the main points again. Meanwhile, if you people have any doubts, kindly ask me. So the positive organism is mycobacterium tuberculosis. So depending upon the host resistance, the host resistance determines whether it has to cause the infection or elimination. So India accounts for one third of the population, world's TB population. Epidemiology positive agent is mycobacterium tuberculosis or mycobacterium bovis. So it's mainly by droplet infection or ingestion. Portalus entry is inhalation, more than 95% ingestion can be a cause and skin also can be infected particularly because of contamination by open wounds congenital infection through the placenta or tuberculous endometritis any doubt anytime kindly let me know Primary tuberculosis infection, the focus is called as gaunt focus. Primary complex is nothing but primary focus plus hilar lymph node plus the draining lymphatic. This together constitutes primary complex. Primary infection in children is more aggressive, more disseminated. 
progressive primary tuberculosis, the progression depends upon the age, number of the tubercle bacilli and host resistance. Progressive pulmonary disease, the progressive primary infection, progression of the recently acquired one. It can be either because of endogenous exacerbation or because of exogenous exacerbation. Symptoms, failure to thrive, fever, effusion, and other abdominal symptoms like arthritis, abdominal mass, limbs, arthritis can be there in bone TB, painless lymph nodes, and other symptoms. This is a gone focus. Here you can see at the bifurcation. Gone focus is same. The upper one is called a Simon's focus. So symptoms like I already told you, there can be fever, anorexia, weight loss, decreased activity and cough. Progress of primary, there can be high fever, cough, expectoration and hemoptysis. Abnormal chest signs like decreased air entry, dullness and repetition. So these are the symptoms. Familiar tuberculosis, I told you all, it is because of the progressive development of small lesion throughout the body because of hematogenous dissemination. It almost disseminates to all the organs. And radiological diagnosis shows snowstorm appearance. It looks like this. Small, small, small nodules are there throughout scattered. This is the solid organ picture. Cutaneous TB can be associated with primary complex or associated with hematogenous dissemination, associated with hypersensitivity to tuberculin. So this is about the cutaneous, cutaneous tuberculosis. Associated with primary complex, associated with hematogenous dissemination, associated with hypersensitivity to tuberculin. Hypersensitivity to tuberculin is called as erythema nodosum. Associated with hematogenous dissemination is papillonecrotic tuberculosis. These pictures I have already shown you TB varicosa, erythema nodosum. The other thing, superficial lymph node is called as proploderma. Ocular choroidal tuberculosis picture. Pale regions of tuberculous infection. This is renal tuberculosis. Skeletal TB commonly infected with vertebra. 
Genital urinary is quite rare. TB meningitis, the focus is called as rich focus, which ruptures into the subarachnoid space. Inflammatory exudates form above the base of the brain and along the sideral vessels. There is raised intracranial tension, additional formation, involvement of the cranial nerves and optic chiasma, cerebral and arthritis. All these narrow volumen reduces the blood flow and leads to cerebral thrombosis and infarction. Stages of TBM, this I have already told you. Stage 1 is irritability. Stage 2 is focal neurological signs and stage 3 is loss of consciousness, Fofan, coma and papilledema. These are the complications. And the diagnosis is by signs of meningeal irritation, SHS neuroimaging, tuberculin testing and retinoscopy for chloride tuberculosis and lumbar puncture. Lumbar puncture will show in raised protein and normal or low sugar level. AFB smear and culture will confirm it. And the plain visualization of the CSF also will show cobweb coagulum or pedicillin standing. Prognosis in TB meningitis is 100% mortality without treatment, 100% survival in stage 1, 75% in stage 2, and stage 3 is variable and all of them will have a equally. Stage, uh, after staging, coming to the direct test, you can do either real lace and staining for AFB from sputum, gastric juice, or biopsy. AFB culture on LG medium, PCR amplification or targeted mycobacterial DNA sequences and DNA probe test that is fluorescent in through to hybridization assay. And culture. Culture can be done in LG medium, backtest radiometric assays, septitex and MGIT. These are the popular culture media. So other tests are PCR, serodiagnosis, ELISA, quantifron TB test. Mantu test, as I have already explained to you people, it is most important test for diagnosis, presence of infection, presence of tuberculous infection. 0.1 ml is given intradermally, 5 tuberculin units of PPD. You read it after 40 to 72 hours, mainly the induration part. More than 10 millimeters considered as positive. I'll read this slide. I already told you people it is an important one. So consider the presumptive diagnosis of TB if at least three are there. Signs and symptoms of TB, close contact with TB, positive man to test, and presence of AFB in the sputum or gastric juice, and lymph node or tissue biopsy positivity, X-ray features of tuberculosis, and response to ATG. History of contact is nothing but a child who lives with an adult taking ATG and does or has taken therapy in the past two years. Remember these drugs, first line drugs, INH, Rifampicin, Pyrazinamid, Ethambutol and Streptomycin. These are the first line drugs. INH dose is 5 mg per kg, Rifampicin is 10 mg per kg, Pyrazinamid is 25 mg per kg, Ethambutol is 20 and Streptomycin is also 20 mg per kg per day. These are the short forms. INH is referred as H. Rifampicin R, pyrazinamide is Z, ethambutol is E, and streptomycin is S. Second line drugs are cyclosmerin, etionamide, TAS, and canamycin. This is used in drug resistant cases, and other drugs also for drug resistant cases, such as quinolone, rifampicin, amikacin, imipinam, and ampicillin. So these are the phases of treatment intensive and continuation phase. This is a categorization according to RNTCP, as I've already told you. And this is a categorization according to Indian Academy of Pediatrics. The five components of DOTS is mainly for observed, direct observed treatment and uh, for monitoring and accountability, good quality sputum and good quality of the drug. Again, drug resistance can be natural acquired, initial or multi-drug resistance. So whichever drug that is resistant, you omit that drug and give the other second line drug. So multi-drug resistant treatment, you can give the other drugs such as aminoglycosid and fluoroconolone. All right, this is one slide I told you people to copy. This is the flow chart. 
which will help you guide the management of tuberculosis. Kindly note the slide down. If there is any uh, doubt, queries, kindly ask me. Alright. If there is no doubt or queries, I'll end the session.